Yes, I hear you. Go ahead. Are you a Muslim? Yes. Your voice is very low. I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Okay, go ahead. What do you want to say to us? Um. So I, I saw the title of your live. Okay. Is why Allah has three eyes. Not Allah. We are talking about Muhammad. Okay. Uh, where did you get that from? Oh, this is from the hadith. Muhammad, he says he can see his back. Which one? Uh, it's in front of your screen. And this is mentioned in Sahih uh, Muslim too. Okay, and why is this a problem? That means Muhammad is not a human like us. He have a three eyes, or maybe four, maybe six, maybe seven. Is he? Okay, and how is this disapproving this Islam? We are not talking about this is disapproving Islam. This is this is telling us that Muhammad obviously is a fabricator, because in the Quran, Muhammad he said that I have no knowledge of anything, and anything is cannot be seen, and is unseen. I cannot tell you that I know the the the. Uh, the treasure of Allah, and I am not an angel. So if he is like us, then how come he can see in his back? Mm. What do you think? Yeah, that's a good point. I don't know. Chapter 6, verse number 50 says, Allah said to Muhammad, tell them, I do not tell you with me the treasure of Allah, nor that I know the unseen. Well, unseen for us is anything we cannot see. Do we agree? Yes. Okay. If you are in my back, at least for me, at that moment, you are unseen. Okay. Okay. So how Muhammad, he claimed that he, in one chapter in the Quran, Allah saying to him, you are a normal person like everybody. I cannot tell you that I'm special. I cannot tell you I'm an angel. I cannot tell you that I know the unseen. I cannot tell you that I know anything. The only thing I know is uh, that I is revealed to me by revelation or inspiration. And here, there is a mistake in here. Did Muhammad receive inspiration or he receive revelation as a message by somebody? He received revelation. Revelation. Which is message, right? A message from Jibreel, correct? Right. And Jibreel, he spoke to him by voice. Do I agree? Yes. So how Muhammad using the word an inspiration? Well, maybe the translation is not the best. No, my, my friend, I speak Arabic. I don't know if you speak Arabic. It says here, إِلَّا مَا يُوحَى إِلَيْهِ يُوحَى, coming from the word wahi, which means inspiration. Inspiration is somebody in my mind, inspire me. If somebody come to my door and knock at my door and he gave me a delivery, that is not inspiration. Do we agree? Yes. Okay. So Muhammad here again, he is contradicting himself because either he inspire or he receive revelation from his God through delivery. Both, it doesn't work. Right? Right. I mean, so what do you think? What do you think? Tell me your opinion, uh, Mariam. Do this religion make sense to you as a Muslim lady? I am amazed to say that, but it is not. It doesn't. That's yeah. wonderful. So why you are a Muslim? Why you don't leave Islam? As long as you notice that this is really silly. What if it's true? And okay, did you hear the guy who called me before you, Mr. Dawood Ali? Um, I heard the last part. Okay, when I told him, I, I, I was joking with him for sure. I told him I have my grandfather, he is 90 years old, and he died and he was holding a stick and he died standing for a year. He said, what's wrong with that? Do you really, Marianne, believe that this is really, and nobody noticed that he is dead, except when the termite, they ate his stick. What do you think about this story?
I don't know. And this is in the Quran, chapter 34, verse number 14. And what is the point of this story? A guy, he have a flying carpet. He have a ring to control the genie. And then the shaitan, he come and he took his face and his look. Always Suleiman, when he go in the bathroom, he give his ring to his wife. And then shaitan come in the shape of Suleiman, and he claimed that he was in the bathroom, and he asked the wife for the ring. She gave him the ring, he lost, he, he lost his kingdom. You watch cartoon, Maria? No. But be honest with me, don't you think this is like a cartoon? Do you think, really believe that the king, he controlled his kingdom by a ring? He go to the bathroom, then shaitan, he come in the look of the man, and he took the ring from the wife, and then he became the king because he got the ring. Did you watch the ring, the Lord of the Ring movie? No. You did not? I didn't. You don't watch TV at all? No. Okay. Well, I don't watch TV when I was a kid because I always, I always break it, you know? So my parents, they forbid me from sitting in the TV room because after five minutes, it's going to be broken. I don't know why, but anyway. So what do you think about this story? Ring, controlling, and then the wives, they notice that this is not their husband because he is so good in bed. What do you think, Mariam? To be honest, it's quite stupid. I agree. It's a stupid story. Very stupid. I agree with you. And as long as you are saying this is a stupid story, I will show you more stupid story. When Muhammad he said the majority of women they will go to hell because they have deficiency in their mind and they have deficiency in their religion. They ask him, what is our deficiency? He said, well, don't the Quran says one woman, one man is equal to two women as witnesses? He said, yes. He said, this is your deficiency in intelligence. And he said, isn't it true that when you have your menstruation, you don't pray or fast? He said, yes. He said, this is your deficiency in religion. Maryam? Do you agree with Muhammad that you are a, a, a lazy lady? You have deficiency in your brain? I do not. But sometimes men are more logical than women because, you know, women act more upon emotions but you know men can get uh, 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 with emotion if you make one man one woman wearing short skirt walk in the front of 10 men not only half a brain will go the whole brain will disappear so this is not an excuse about emotion men can be infected and do stupid things when he get tempted as an example so where is the wisdom of the man where is the wise man he got tempted you know, and he do the wrong thing. So if women, they have emotion, who said that men have to have no emotion? Secondly, if the women, she have deficiency because she is not allowed to witness in the court, is that her fault? Islam forbid her from witnessing. In fact, if we take a woman and a man to a, a wedding party, as an example, you go with your husband, and then you come back from the wedding party, and then we ask Maryam, to tell us the details, and we ask your husband to tell us what happened. Who is the one you think, Mariam, will tell better details? The husband or you? Me. Why? Because you are a female, correct? Yes. So he's wrong. Women, they remember things. Men, they don't even remember what they ate for lunch. So when the Quran says women, they cannot equal to be the, to the man to witness. Why? Because if one of them forgot, the other one will remind her. But the man is the one who forgot. 
women they will remember what women they were wearing what the bride was wearing what her uh, maid was wearing what etc what the what the, what the room was. everybody they, she, they remember the clothing even the perfume even the food they remember everything the man he remember nothing so when Muhammad says women they have deficiency in their brain regarding memory proving proving the deficiency is he is the one who has deficiency to the point Muhammad cannot remember the Quran after he recited the Quran, that's why he claimed Allah he sent him seven Quran. In the top of that, Maria, when the Quran says that you have deficiency, or Muhammad says you have deficiency because you don't fast Ramadan, you don't pray like the rest of the Muslims because you have menstruation. But but isn't it Islam forbid you from praying when you have menstruation? It's Islam for you, forbid you, right? So right. how that can be deficiency? You, so you forbid me from praying, and then that will make me deficient. If you allow me to pray when I am having a period, well, I'll, I will be like everybody. So, and who is the one, let us say for the sake of argument, you have deficiency in your brain. Who is the one who made you? Supposedly Allah, correct? Right. Well, if Allah make you with deficiency, how are you going to send you to hell for what he did? <laughs> You see, he was stupid. Muhammad, he says that he's asking the women to give charity because he saw most of them, they go to hell and explaining why. But both of them, if you have a deficiency in the brain, uh, as he claimed, or you have the menstruation, as he said, but this is what Allah, he did to you, if this is true. So why you will go to hell? I will not go to hell for that. You will not. You will not absolutely. I will. Uh, I will be happy to say, to to invite you to be with heaven in heaven with our Lord. So, Marian, do you want to be in this religion? If I am you, I will leave right away. This is garbage. You know, this is disrespect to your mother, my mother, your sister. You know, if 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 the mother, because this is an attack on the mother, the women. If my mother, she had deficiency, as Muhammad said, and he is saying that all the mothers will go to hell. There's a hadith says Muhammad says that heaven is under the feet of the mothers. Why? Because he wants them to have babies. But as you see, mothers are going to go to hell because all mothers they have menstruation. And according to him, all mothers and all women, they have half a brain. So why, Mary, Maryam, why you don't denounce Muhammad and say, I am out of Islam, my, my sister? What are you waiting for? I am out of Islam. Hallelujah. We are happy for you, Maryam. You are out of Islam and now you are free. But let us make you more free. Let us, let us, let us make you fly with the angels. What do you know about Christ, Maryam? As long as you decide to leave Islam, now I have a duty to introduce you to my Lord, to my Savior. And I am hoping that you will accept him so you can be saved. What do you think about Christ? I think he was a prophet of God. Okay, he is a prophet of God. But don't you think that prophet of God, he commits sin? He commits sin, right? All of us, we are human, we commit sin, correct? Yes. But Jesus never commits sin. If somebody, he never commits sin and he forgives sin, what that will make him? I don't know. That will make him God. Because that will make you perfect. Perfection is a miracle. And Jesus is a miracle. When Jesus is born, his birth was a miracle, correct? Right. So God did miracles for us so we might believe. 
But why Jesus himself is the miracle? The Bible says that God is a miracle. Prophets, they do miracles. God, he gave them power to do miracles, or he did it for them. Jesus himself is the miracle. Not only he do miracle, he is the miracle. When Jesus said in, 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 in the book of John, who of you can point at me as a sinner? Who of you can prove me as a sinner? Nobody. When Jesus said to the Jews, after he said to a person, go and your sin is forgiven, the Jews in their mind, they said to themselves, who is this man who is forgiven sin? Only God can do that. And by the way, the Quran confirmed that only God can forgive sin. Then Jesus, he said to them, which one is easier? To, for, to say, go and your sin is forgiven? Or to tell the guy who cannot walk, carry your bed and walk? What do you think, Maryam? Do you believe in the miracles of Christ? Well, to be Christian, I have to believe that Jesus is God, right? Yes. How can a human be God? Well, how come God not to be what he wants? You see, when we say almighty, what do you think of the word almighty? What almighty mean? Um, that he can do anything. Exactly. So, if the angel, according to the Quran, came to Mary and appeared to her as a perfect man, correct? Yeah. Okay. If an angel can come and be a man just because he wished so, can God come and be a man? So there's no problem because we have God Almighty. God Almighty, there's no limitation of his power and it doesn't affect him for being a human. Even the Quran in chapter 19 verse 19 says that Jesus is the Holy Son. The Muslim they try to put him down says, oh, he's born of a woman. But here you notice that even Jesus in his birth, he gave respect to you, Mary, Maryam. And your name is Maria. And he was born of a woman. Her name is Maria. So Jesus, by coming to this earth, and he is born of a woman, he showed a word that when you look down at the women, you are very wrong. I am not the son of any man. But I'm coming to you, and I am a son of a woman. How much respect the women she will earn more than Jesus himself is born through a woman. So, born of a virgin, the virginity here is to show you that God not only can come as a man, but he can come as a man without sexual relationship the way you know always, for he is almighty. So, he broke the nature of the human being by coming from a virgin, and the Quran confirmed that Mary, she is a virgin. In Islam, this miracle, there's no point of it, because my mother, she can claim that she gave birth to me and she was a virgin too. And your mother, Maryam, she can say that too, because nobody can witness this miracle. But virginity here proving to us that Jesus the Christ is born with no sexual relationship. He is above all mankind. This is why Jesus said, I am from above, you are from below. When he said, I am from above, he is not showing off that he like, okay, I am high, you are down. No. As you know that Jesus, he washed the feet of his disciple. When he said, I am from above, he is showing us who is he. And the funny, the Muslim, they say to us, where Jesus says, I am God, worship me. Well, all the Bible says so. So if you go to John chapter 8, Jesus said, you are from below, you are from beneath, I am from above. Jesus was confirming who is he, 
and what he present. So when we believe Maryam in Jesus as God, we are believing in Almighty who can do everything. When Jesus here resurrected the person from death, the Quran says even he made it from the bird, from the mother bird. So he's a creator. So what is left for Jesus not to do? He can resurrect you from death. He can create you from the mud. He created eyes to the blind man who cannot see. He did not give medication. He was not a doctor. He is not a physician. And he is not an engineer. When he controlled the nature, when he controlled the storms, when he feed the thousands, even the chapter in the Quran, there's a chapter it's called Chapter of Al Maida, the table. This is about Jesus feeding thousands of people. So, did we ask ourselves why all those miracles, amazing, powerful miracles about Jesus? He can tell you even what you hide in your houses. What is missing for you, Maryam, to believe that Jesus is God? Is there anything missing? No. So would you, my sister, accept the Messiah as your Savior so you can be saved today? What does saved mean? That means I will go to heaven? You will, you see, the second you accept the Messiah, you will be considered as a child of God. Child of God doesn't mean that God did marry my mother and we are, you know, he gave birth to us. No. Child of God mean that because he loves us, you see, our God is different from the God of the Muhammadan. The God of Islam, he wants slaves. That's why Muhammad, he says, if you don't commit sin and seek forgiveness, Allah will wipe you out of existence and will replace you with people who commit sin and ask for forgiveness. Our Lord is different. Our Lord, he loves us as a children. So when you accept the Messiah as your Lord, as your Savior, you are a child of God in the kingdom of God. And Jesus, he said, he and she, they will be the same as angels, which mean me and you. I'm not going to be better than you because I am male. And you will not be better than me because you are a female. We are equal in the eyes of God and we are children of God. So when you accept him, you will be in heaven. And heaven of Allah is not about sexual relationship. For God who created the joy of sex, he can give us a joy nobody can imagine. God who gave us the joy of tasting food, he can give us a joy nobody can imagine. So the heaven of God, our Lord, is way high from the human needs. He will free us from the needs. That's why he says they will be the same as angels, which means the first joy God will give you is to be free from any needs. Imagine, Maryam, you do not need to eat. You do not need to drink. You do not need to sleep. You do not need a doctor. You, not, you will not cry. You will be always enjoying life, and the life he will give you is different life. So when you say, I accept the Messiah, not only you accept the Messiah and you will go to heaven, you accept to be the same as the Messiah, holy. You accept to be a person who loves everybody. That's why Jesus says, love your enemy. So if you accept the Messiah, you accept that you will not be hateful. You will be always grateful and forgiving. For God loved the world. He sent his only begotten son. So you need to fit with the Lord you want to believe in. You have to be loving the same as he loves you. But I think it's impossible to be perfect, to be always grateful, as you said. It's impossible, and I'm not saying I am perfect. We just said only Jesus is perfect. I'm not saying that he will be perfect. This is why the Bible says, be holy like your father, which means it's a project you work in. So tomorrow should be better than yesterday. The day after should be better from the day before it. You will not be holy, and you are not perfect for a very simple reason. God did not make you perfect anyway. But because you work toward perfection, the Lord, he see it. He see that you are fighting your sin, fighting your guilt, trying to be the best you can as a better person. That's why 
God forgive us. He forgive us because we do wrong, not because we are perfect. Correct? Right. A person who is perfect, he don't do wrong, or he do not need forgiveness. But because we are not, God forgive our sin, and the Messiah, he forgive your sin. So when we say you, you have to fit with the Lord you belong to, which means in this, in this case is a Messiah, you have to promise yourself you will work hard as much as you can, not to be hateful. Like you see, I don't hate Muslims, I will never hate them. Even though they threaten me every day, they kill you, I will never hate, hate, hate one. Because the second I do, I am against my belief. I'm going down, not going up. The Lord, he said, from the fruits, you shall know them. So what the Messiah is saying to you, that if you really follow me, then you will be the same as a good tree who give good fruits. And your salvation is based on your faith, not by the fruits. But the fruit is something will happen automatically because you are following the Messiah. So if you see somebody hungry, you feed him. Not because this will take you to heaven, no, but because you are following the Messiah, you have a heart, you have love, you feel for others. This is why the Messiah, he said, I was hungry and you, feed, you, know, you fed me, I was a stranger and you took me in, I was sick and you visited me, etc. So they said to him, Lord, when we did that to you? He said, when you do it to my brothers, you did it to me. So with the Messiah, Maryam, you are a new person. Your heart is different. And not only that, when you get married, the man, he should love you the same as Christ, he loved the church. So the Messiah is the only one who made the women, not only is born from a woman, he made the women equal to the church. The Messiah, he gave himself to the church and he ordered us to give yourself to your wife. What does that mean? You are there to have a duty not to take advantage. Not like the Quran says, beat them until they obey you. Women in Christianity, she obey her husband because she love him and he will not force her to obey except by base of love. Because she love me, she obey me. And because I love her, I give myself to her. Not because I have muscles and she don't. Not because I spend money on her as the Quran says and she don't spend money on me. So with the Messiah, Maryam, you are saved from all the hell of Islam. First, you are going to be with the Lord in his heaven. Secondly, your life will change. Your value is back to normal. You are equal to everybody. Nobody will look down at you as a woman. You are the child of God. I invite you, Maryam, to believe in the Messiah. Me and you, we might go to sleep and we don't wake up tomorrow. You never know. We don't know what two hours from now will happen. Salvation, you cannot miss. Because this will be the biggest mistake in life. You can miss the bus, you can miss a job, you can lose money, you can lose anything. And you can win anything. But there is really one true win in this life, is the life after of salvation. So I invite you, Maryam, to accept the Messiah as your Lord. I accept the Messiah as my Lord. I mean to that. I mean to that. I hear that. I hear you crying. I, I, lo I was going to go today, actually. And you text me, and I wasn't going to take it or even to call you. I am so happy, Mariam, that you called me. I'm so happy today I got the chance to talk, to talk to you. And the Lord, he said in the Bible, there is a happiness in the kingdom of, the, of, of our Lord. Just for one soul is saved. This is how much our Lord, he loves you. A happiness there is. Do you want to say anything to those people? Look, look how many people are happy for you that you accept the Messiah today. Do you want to say anything? Um, thank you for sharing me, uh, sharing with me this 
uh, truth about who God is. That's all I want to say. My sister, there's no thanks to me, thanks to the Lord, that he brought the child of God like you, a good-hearted person, back home. You are just back home today. And don't thank the man, thank the Lord, which is the Lord today, who help you to be here, who help you to, to see, and it is him and only him who can save you. I'm nobody. We are happy for you, Maryam. If you have any question about the Bible or anything, I will be happy to answer you. I want you, uh, uh, maybe you, maybe in private you can tell me uh, if, if there is uh, some churches close to you, if you like to share where you live, so maybe I can find somebody to help you. However, you can download the Bible from the internet. And you can start reading the Bible, start from John. The Gospel of John. We have four Gospels, but the four Gospels doesn't mean we have four religion or four belief. Four Gospels, four writers writing the story of Christ and writing what Jesus said and his teaching. So I would like you to start reading from the book of John, whatever you can every day. And if you can go to a church close to you, uh, and ask them to help you to understand more the Bible and tell them about what happened to you. I'm sure they will be so glad and so happy to help you. Well, yes, there are many Orthodox churches Wonderful. here. Wonderful. Orthodox churches are very, 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 very good. Uh, uh, you can tell me, and maybe I can find someone to contact you if you like, you know. But you can go to any church and tell them I want to learn. You know, and uh, I accept the Messiah because you need to get baptized. And don't worry about the baptized. It's not like you, you know, you are doing a surgery. You know, it's a very simple thing to happen. Uh, it's just you. We will be reborn again with the, with the Christ because today you believe in Him, and the Holy Spirit will be always with you when you get baptized. Do you have any question for me, Marianne? No. Well, I have you in Skype. If you have anything, please let me know. And I will be happy to help. All right? Sure. Yes. God bless you, sister. And I ask everybody here in the chat, leave your comment later. Pray for our sister Maryam. So the Lord will strengthen her with, with, with faith and knowledge and wisdom. And he will keep her pure heart, pure always. Always maintain your pure heart. And what brought you today to Christ is your pure heart. Remember, we are sinners, yes. But there is the decency in our heart is showing us where to go. And she just, she just followed today her heart. And she accepted the Messiah. We are happy for you, Maryam. If you have any question for me, go ahead before you go. Okay, but I can think of any question right now. All right. If I have and I will text you. Sure. All right, sister. Take care and happy for you. God bless you. Thank you. Take care. God is good. God is good. This is why, you know, like sometime, you know, you work hard, you lose your voice, people scream at you. And, you know, what I do is not really fun until until you hear the voice of a person saying, I accept Christ. Otherwise, everything is not fun. But when you hear that voice, and I heard it already for thousands and thousands of times, that is the friendly love of happiness.